friends, welcome to Love and Life's Journey DIY. I'm Chantel, and in this video, we are going over my best 21 DIYs in 2021. Now, these are not really in any particular order, but we are going to start with one that is one of my all-time favorite DIYs. It is this lantern, and so let's jump in and get started, and I'll show you how to make it. I'm going to be using this sign from Dollar Tree for the base of my lantern and I'm going to start by removing all of the labels, the hanger, and the stake so that all I have left is the round part. And then I'm going to paint that on both sides using some brown chalk paint. This is a Waverly brand in the color Truffle so it's just a dark brown. And I'm not painting the edges of this because it is going to be covered up and not show anyway. And since the one side of the round sign was a little bit slick, I am going to give it a coat of clear matte sealer just to help that paint stay on better. Then I'm going to paint eight of these 12 inch dowels from Dollar Tree. And I'm using the same color of brown paint and I'm going to give them all a good coat and then I'm going to wipe off the excess paint. This will give it a little bit more of a worn or a even stained look instead of just being a solid paint color. I'm going to use the round piece of this little picture frame that I picked up in the crafter square aisle at Dollar Tree uh, for the top of my lantern and I'm going to remove it from the base and then I will remove the center and the little metal prongs that hold the picture in as well. So basically all I'm left with is a wooden donut. And then I'm going to paint it with the same brown paint and wipe off the excess. Next I'm going to use some of this iron-on wood veneer edging that I picked up on Amazon. You can also find it at Home Depot or Lowe's and I will put a link to it in the description box. But I am going to use this and I'm going to cut a piece that is just a little bit bigger than my circle and uh, I'm leaving about an inch of overlap on this and then uh, I will actually cut two pieces the same size. And I love these miter shears for cutting this material. It just works so well. Definitely one of my favorite crafting tools. I'm also cutting two smaller pieces to go on top of that smaller circle to uh, add to the top of my lantern. I'm using this old glass cutting board to protect my surface, just something that is heat resistant. You can use an ironing board, but I'm just using this and I'm going to put the two adhesive sides together on my strips of veneer and then just iron them with a hot iron. It just takes a few seconds to adhere those together. And the nice thing is when these are still warm, you can shape them. So I'm going to go ahead and just bend them into the circles. And then I'm going to use a little clip from Dollar Tree in the Crafter Square uh, and clip it together while it cools. And this will help it hold its shape. I decided to trim off a little bit of the ends on this and then uh, I'm just kind of measuring how big I want the circle and then I'm going to secure it together with a little bit of hot glue and again I'll just clamp that while that hot glue sets up. I'm going to do the same thing with the two longer pieces and I'm going to iron those together and then wrap them around my base, the circle uh, that I painted and uh, clamp that together uh, to kind of hold that shape until it cools. And it doesn't have to be perfect, uh, it just needs to uh, be close just so that uh, it will hold the shape. 
and once that has cooled I am going to paint it and the smaller circle as well and I am going to wipe off the excess paint on these two. Then once the paint is dry I'm going to glue the veneer edging along the edge of that circle and I'm just making sure that it is flush on the bottom so that my lantern is going to sit level. To help mark out where my dowels are going to go, I'm going to trace around my small circle on a piece of paper and cut that out. Then I'm going to fold that in half and I'm just using that as kind of a guideline to make marks across from each other on the edge of the circle. And I'm going to mark it out in eight sections so that I have eight points where I'm going to be gluing my dowels. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the large circle. I cut a piece of paper to fit inside and then I am going to mark out eight points on this as well. Then I'm going to use my hot glue gun and I'm going to do the dowels that are opposite each other, um, just doing two at a time. Uh, to try and get these even and, and have time to work with them. Uh, I'm gluing them at a little bit at an angle and then I'm going to glue them to the top ring of the lantern. And then I'm going to continue adding the dowels until I have all eight in place. Next I'm going to glue the small ring to the top of the lantern and so I'm using a little bit of hot glue very sparingly around the edge of that ring and then I'll just glue it right onto the top centered on that donut shaped piece. Now I'm going to add my twine to this and hopefully I can explain this well but first I'm going to start off by just putting four pieces of twine wrapped around the lantern and tied off uh, just equally spaced all the way up the lantern. Once I have those on and tied off, I am going to secure them with a little bit of hot glue so that they don't slide up or down the lantern. And uh, I will just secure them um, in several different places all the way around the lantern. And then I'm going to trim off the extra ends where I tied the knots. Okay, this is the part where it gets a little bit tricky and hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So I first am going to take a uh, a long piece of twine you have to take it off of the spool because you won't be able to thread it through everywhere you need so I just wound some around my hand and then I am taking uh, one end and hot gluing it at the bottom uh, on one of the dowels at the outside kind of between that outer rim and the dowel and then I am going to take the twine and I'm going to wrap it up to the next dowel and I'm going to go inside the lantern and around the dowel and wrap it around and then come back down to the next dowel. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going up to that next twine row behind the dowel and then back down and I'm going to secure that with a little bit of hot glue at the bottom of the lantern and I'm going to zigzag all the way around that bottom row just like I did here.
When I have the bottom row finished, I'm going to start the next row up and I am going to do the same thing and I am making it so the twine kind of makes a diamond pattern and you'll kind of see it take shape but here I'm going behind the dowel and then I'm going back down to meet the other one I'm going to wrap it from like the bottom around and uh, it'll make sense when you're doing it because you kind of have to wrap it around the dowel or the twine to get it to hold itself in place and um, so I just continue this all the way around the lantern and all the way up. And then I do use some hot glue at the top of the lantern to secure it at the top of those dowels where it meets the top ring. So after Christmas last year, I bought this unfinished wood bead garland on clearance. So I'm going to be using beads from it. You can get wooden beads at craft stores or on Amazon. And I will put a link in the description box below for those. But I figured out how long I wanted to make my little handle. And I'm going to use that many beads. And then a great way to paint or stain these is to add your paint or stain to a little Ziploc baggie and since I'm using paint I added some water to it and then I'm just going to put my beads inside the bag zip it up and then I'm just going to roll them all around so they're good and covered and then I'm going to take them out put them on some paper towel and wipe off all of the excess paint and then just let them dry this is so much easier than trying to paint them one at a time and definitely much cleaner. I did wipe off the excess paint as much as I could so these looked more uh, worn or stained and then I am just threading them on that same twine that I used to wrap around the lantern and then I will tie off the ends uh, with some bigger knots and secure them with hot glue and then I'm going to glue them onto that top rim of the lantern. I'm just going to add this skinnier LED candle that I got from Hobby Lobby and some greenery that I believe I picked up at Walmart and I love how this turned out. This is definitely one of my top five favorite DIYs that I have ever done. I love how this turned out. And it looks so high-end. It looks like it was really complicated, but honestly it was not that hard and I did it in one evening. So I am um, loving this. I think it would be great uh, to use for a nautical theme uh, decor as well, but I just love how it turned out. DIY number two is going to be a little bit simpler. It is this Valentine garland. I will be using a four pack of these felt coasters that I found in the Valentine section at Dollar Tree, as well as a four pack of these little chalkboard tags. And these were in the crafting section or crafter square aisle. I will also be using some jute twine and one roll of this black and white check ribbon as well as some of this red and white baker's twine that I found these were in a three pack three different colors in the crafter square aisle when I purchased these I thought that that little red and white check ribbon was on each of the coasters which now that I think about it it doesn't really make sense because then your drink wouldn't sit 
on the coaster very well but it was just to hold these together in the package and to look cute it's a cute ribbon I'm going to take it off and use it and at first I was going to cut it but then I realized I could just pull the end off really easy it was just glued with a little bit of glue and I'm going to set that aside because I will be using it a little bit later so I am going to be making a garland using these and the little chalkboard heart signs and so I'm just going to lay them out figure out how long I want my garland to be for where I want to hang it and um, kind of the order that I want it to be in and so uh, that's totally up to you you can customize it however works for you so I liked the little red and white accent ribbon on these hearts but I only had a little teeny tiny piece of that ribbon so I'm using this red and white baker's twine to kind of basically do the same thing as how that ribbon was on the package I'm just putting it through the L and then going over to the edge and I wrapped it around a couple of times and then I'm going to tie a little bow So I decided to use three of the red hearts for my garland. On the center heart, I wanted to use the ribbon that came with these coasters. I thought the bow that was already on there was a little bit, it looked more like it was made by a machine instead of by hand. So I am tying my own little bow with the remainder of the ribbon, and I'm going to put that on the center heart. I'm also going to add some of the baker's twine to the third heart. This one I am tying on the opposite side of the heart than I did on the first one. And you can embellish these any way you want. You can leave them plain if you want. But I decided it would kind of balance it to have it on, on the left side on the left heart and on the right side on the right heart. And so that's just how I did it. Next I'm going to create a couple of little bows for my little chalkboard hearts. So I cut a piece of twine four inches long approximately and then I'm going to use some of the red and white baker's twine to wrap around two fingers about eight times and I'll tie it off in the center using that small piece of twine that I cut. After trimming the ends of the bow, then I am going to take a little bit of hot glue and I am going to just glue this right over the hole that is in that little chalkboard heart tag uh, just to cover that up and the glue will kind of go through the hole and it will stick to the tag and then that hole is disguised. So now that my hearts are all embellished, I am going to take some of the jute twine and I am going to figure out how long I want my garland to be and then I'm going to lay out my hearts and have it all spaced kind of how I want it and I have found it's easiest to turn my hearts over so that I have the back sides facing up and then it's really easy to glue them to the twine. If you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I do a lot of Dollar Tree DIYs, DIYs on a budget, uh, some trash to treasure projects, and just some miscellaneous things. I would love to have you stick around, so hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the bell and set your notifications so that YouTube will notify you when I upload new videos. So as you can see here, I'm using a very scientific method of using my hand as my measurement to space my hearts. You can measure them if you want, I just kind of guesstimate. So now I'm going to take my black and white checked ribbon and I am going to cut some pieces about five inches long and I'm going to tie them in between each of the hearts and then one at each end. Here's my finished garland. I added it to my mantle. I still have some winter things up on my mantle, but Valentine's Day falls in winter here in Idaho. So I think it's okay that I've got some snowflakes up here along with my Valentine's.
project number three is going to take us into spring. It is this Welcome Spring Picket Fence. I'm going to be using these spring felt coasters. These are also new at Dollar Tree this year and I think they are really fun. I will also be using six of the large paint stirring sticks. These are called five gallon stir sticks. I got these at Walmart in a three pack for a little over a dollar. You can get them at all home improvement stores. And then I'm also using this little chalkboard sign. I'm repurposing it from a different project that it already has said welcome spring. So it's perfect. I'm going to take five of the stir sticks and I'm going to measure 15 inches from the narrow end of the stick and mark all five of these sticks so that I can cut them off. For the last stir stick I'm going to measure uh, nine inches and mark that and then another nine or at 18 inches and mark that because I'll be cutting this um, basically cutting the end off and then cutting that stick in half. I'm going to use my miter box and saw to cut these sticks and this is a great tool. I'll link it in the description box below if you're interested in it, but it's great for crafting. I know I always get comments about how there's a lip on the bottom of the miter box so that you can uh, put it on the edge of like a desk or a counter to help hold it steady. But guys, there is no lip on the edge of my miter box on the bottom and so um, I use this shelf liner from Dollar Tree to put under it. It helps keep it from sliding around. And so um, that's one reason I don't put it on the edge of my desk. And the other reason is so that it is in the center of my frame for filming. But I appreciate all your comments. So I love to hear your suggestions and your tips. So keep them coming. Once I have all my pieces cut, I am going to sand down those cut edges so that they're nice and smooth. And now I'm going to paint all of my stir sticks with the ivory chalk paint. And I actually did all five of the long sticks and one of the shorter sticks that goes across the bottom. And then I I ended up not painting the bottom of the, most of those sticks because I wanted the glue to adhere well and so I'm just using the hot glue to glue one on each end and make sure the bottom is flush. Then I'm going to space the other three in between and if you haven't figured it out yet we're making a picket fence and so once those are spaced and neat and I just eyeball this I am not like one of those crafters that measures everything I just eyeball it. I happen to think a little bit of imperfection is what makes handmade crafts so great. But if you are a perfectionist, there is nothing wrong with that. Go ahead and get out your tape measure and measure away. So now I'm going to put my other cross piece on across the top, but I'm going to actually put it behind the picket fence pickets, I guess that's what you call them. Uh, and I didn't paint this one because I knew I'd only need to paint where it shows through on the front. So I am measuring down um, about four inches or so and I'm going to uh, do that on both sides just because I want to have this be straight. So you know, I just talked about not measuring stuff and here I am measuring stuff, but there are some things that it is important to measure. And then I'm going to attach that to each of the pickets with my hot glue and that will make this fence nice and sturdy. Then I'm going to come in with some of the ivory chalk paint and just fill in those little sections that are showing through the pickets. And if you know me, of course you know I'm going to add some dry brushing. So I'm using my brown paint again and I'm going to dry brush this just to give it that aged look. So these felt coasters come in a package of four and they're just tied together with this ribbon that makes them look really cute in the package. So I'm going to remove that ribbon so that I can take the coasters apart. 
And at first I was thinking I was just going to be using one of the coasters for each of the flowers, but it seemed really flat and not, it didn't have enough dimension. So uh, I was trying to figure out kind of how to, to make that look a little bit more three-dimensional. And so I decided I'm going to use two of each color of the flowers, and then I'm going to glue them together with a little bit of hot glue. So as I was arranging these, I got the idea to, you guessed it, dry brush on these flowers. And so I wanted to make them look a little bit more farmhouse and mute the color just a little bit. I love the colors, but I was going for more of a farmhouse vibe, so I added a little bit of the ivory chalk paint to these flowers. Then I'm attaching them to my picket fence with some hot glue. And then I'm going to hang my little welcome spring sign over the top of one of the pickets. And I didn't want it to hang just straight, which is what it wanted to do. So I'm going to uh, add a little bit of glue to the back of that just to hold it at an angle. And then I'm going to take a little bit of thicker jute twine and tie a knot in one end going to glue that to the back side of my sign on one side and then figure out how long I want this hanger to be. Tie a knot on the other end, glue it on the other side, and then my sign is all finished. Our fourth project is another one that's fun for spring. It's this cute little birdhouse. I will be using one of these terracotta pots. These are the ones that come in a two pack. I believe they're about a three inch pot. And I'll be using a wooden birdhouse as well as a 12 inch wooden dowel. I'll also be using these florals from Dollar Tree. I like these. They look like a Japanese cherry blossom or maybe a dogwood blossom. Very spring like and I'll be using one of these chalkboard wooden stakes. And I also picked up this little bird from the miniature fairy garden section. I also needed something to add a little bit of weight, so I'm using these glass beads that I had on hand from Dollar Tree. You can also use rocks from Dollar Tree or just from outside. For my first step, I am going to find the center of the bottom of my birdhouse, and I'm just using a ruler to mark from corner to corner to find the center and then I'm going to drill a hole the size of my wooden dowel. Next I'm going to take some dark brown paint and I am painting inside the birdhouse just mainly the back side of it and on the sides just so when you look in you don't see that light colored wood. Then I'm going in with some ivory colored chalk paint and painting the walls of my birdhouse. And then I'm going to use that same dark brown paint and paint the roof and the base of the birdhouse as well as the little perches where the bird sits. And I'm not covering this fully. I want it to have a little bit of a worn look so I'm letting some of the natural wood show through. But I also gave my dowel a coat of that brown paint as well. Next I'm going to add a little dry brushing to my walls of my birdhouse and I picked up these little metal paint brushes at Dollar Tree because they look like they'd be really good for dry brushing and this is the first time I've used them and I am liking how they are working. I wanted this to look a little bit more like a white birch tree so I'm going a little bit heavier in a few spots with the dry brushing uh, just to look like that white bark. Now 
Next I'm going to paint my terracotta pot and a trick I like to use is to seal the pot first and you can use something like this liquid sealer or you can use a spray sealer and so this time I'm going to use the liquid sealer. I think it actually works a little bit better than the spray. And the reason I am doing this is because if you don't seal the terracotta pot, the pot will absorb your paint and it will take four or five coats to actually cover your pot. So this way I seal it first and then it only takes about two coats of paint. Once the sealer has completely dried, then I'm going to give my pot a couple of coats of that same ivory chalk paint that I used on the birdhouse. And then when that paint is dry, I'm going to go back in and really lightly dry brush some of that dark brown paint on the pot as well. So now I'm going to push the dowel into the hole that we drilled in the bottom of the birdhouse and I'm going to push the dowel all the way up till it hits the top of the birdhouse. And this worked perfectly. The hole was a little bit tight and the birdhouse uh, uh, just sat on that dowel really tight and secure. I didn't even use any glue or anything. Next I'm going to secure the dowel into the pot and the hole in the bottom of the pot is a little bit larger than the dowel but I am going to use some hot glue and just attach this a little bit. You could just put foam in your pot and push this down into it. I decided to try it this way. So I'm adding some hot glue on the bottom of my dowel and if you set your pot on something metal like this metal ruler uh, and then push this down into the hole. Um, when the glue is set, it'll pop right off of that metal ruler. And so I am doing that, and then I am going to add some extra hot glue around the bottom of the pot, uh, around that dowel, and then also on the inside of the pot. Then I'm going to add my glass beads around the dowel to help hold it in place and also to give some weight to this so that it isn't top heavy. Then I'm going to cover up those glass beads with some green moss. And this is some Spanish moss that I picked up at Walmart, but you can get all kinds of moss at Dollar Tree as well. Next I'm going to add my florals and I just cut off a couple of the branches off of this and then I am just tucking them into uh, the moss and I didn't add glue or anything. They just stuck in here and stayed in place really well. So the first one I'm wrapping around the dowel and then the second one I'm kind of placing so that it comes up a little bit on the side and the back of the birdhouse. And then I want it to look like the bird has built a nest inside the house, so I'm using a little bit of brown Spanish moss and tucking that in the lower hole of the birdhouse. I'm also going to embellish my pot a little bit just by adding some jute twine around the top rim. I'm going to wrap it around three times and then tie a little knot. Next I'm going to make a little sign with that chalkboard stake and I was going to use a chalk marker but it was too thick to write what I wanted to write so I am using some white paint and a really fine paintbrush and I just freehanded the words home tweet home. I found these cute little birds in my stash. I think I picked them up at a craft store years ago. Uh, so I'm going to use those, but if you don't have them, you can use the little bird from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to add one little bird onto the top perch of my birdhouse, and then I'm going to add another one on the corner of the birdhouse. And then I tucked my little home tweet home sign down into the moss inside the pot and it's all finished. I think it is so cute.
this next project is also a spring project, but it's specifically for Easter. I will be using this 11 by 14 inch photo frame from Dollar Tree. And I will also be using this 11 by 14 inch canvas board. This is, I think, the largest size that Dollar Tree carries. I'm going to be using one of these cathedral window wall art pieces from Dollar Tree. If you can't find these, don't worry, you'll still be able to do this project. And then I'm going to use these pretty little roses that I found at Walmart. I think I paid like $1.49 or something for these. And to paint this project, I'm going to be using some Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory and also in ink. And then I will also be using some brown acrylic craft paint. So to start out, I'm going to give my canvas a coat of the ivory chalk paint. I'm using a foam brush and I'm just going over this pretty quickly just to cover up the stark white with more of a, a softer off-white color. So next I'm going to remove that little sign that says Home Sweet Home off of the window decor piece. And then I am going to be using this just as a stencil basically. So uh, I'm not actually going to be using this in the project as far as like gluing it to the project or anything. I'm just going to be tracing around it. So then I will have it to use in a different project. And so I am measuring so that I can get this centered and then I will be tracing around the top part of the window. Now, if you can't find these at your Dollar Tree, I know a lot of you have been saying you haven't been able to find them, um, that's okay. You can find a picture of a similar type window um, just online and print that out and use it as a pattern uh, or just um, find maybe even like Google a, a cathedral window coloring page maybe or pattern or template. Uh, just see what kind of images you can get to pull up and then print something out that is a shape that you like and uh, you can use that for a pattern. So now that I have that traced onto my canvas with the pencil, I'm going to take that brown acrylic craft paint and a flat brush and I am going to paint this and I'm not going to paint it like real dark and solid. I want this to look kind of like weathered wood. So I've watered down my paint just a little bit and then I am getting a little bit of the paint off of the brush so that it doesn't paint too dark. And I'm starting lighter than I really want it to be because I can always add more paint. So I'm just going to go uh, over this and then if I want to make it darker then I can go back over it again. So I decided just to stop with what I have here. I like the looks of this so I'm going to use a white eraser and erase those extra pencil lines that I have in there so it looks nice and neat. Next I'm going to measure three-fourths of an inch up from the bottom and put a mark on each side of the canvas. I'm going to draw a line across this. This is going to be a guide for my lettering and then I am going to make a mark every three inches from that first mark that I made um, on both sides as well to draw lines across the canvas and these are going to be my uh, guide for drawing my boards for making it look like shiplap. So next I am going to take a really small liner paintbrush and some of the ink chalk paint 
and I have watered the paint down quite a bit so that um, it has a, a thinner consistency so that I can draw thin lines with it and you can see I'm kind of testing that with my paintbrush to see if I have good control with the consistency of the paint and um, if you don't like to paint uh, like this or you don't have a steady hand uh, you can use just a marker to draw these lines on if you're more comfortable with that. Next I'm going to use one of these metal paint brushes from Dollar Tree. These have uh, stiffer bristles and they are great for dry brushing. So I'm putting a little bit of the ink colored paint on my paintbrush and then wiping most of it off on the paper towel and then I am rubbing it across the top of where I just painted those lines. You want to make sure that your lines are dry before you do this. And I'm going over the lines specifically a little bit darker uh, just to highlight those um, those lines and then I am also dry brushing in between the lines uh, just to give those boards a little bit of a distressed look. For my lettering I thought about using some stickers, I thought about using some stencils, you can get all of these at Dollar Tree. I also thought about using my Cricut machine, but I wasn't sure how well the vinyl would stick to this rough canvas surface. So in the end, I decided just to get on my laptop and use the word processor, print out the lettering in a font and the size that I wanted, and I'm just going to go old school with this. And I'm going to go over the back of the paper where my lettering is with a pencil and just uh, color over that so that I'm covering the whole area where the lettering is. And then I'm going to place this on my project where I want it and I am going to just trace over my letters with a pencil and then that is going to transfer the pencil on the back of the paper to my project so that I will be able to see where my letters are and use that as a pattern for um, copying the letters with a sharpie marker. So then I'm just going to trace over the letters with a sharpie marker and this worked great. I was actually very surprised at how well the sharpie marker wrote on the canvas. Um, it didn't bleed at all and it uh, just went over that texture really well. So this was a really easy way to do the lettering. Next I'm going to take that floral stem that I got at Walmart and I pulled the leaves and the greenery off of it. I cut the little roses off and then I am just arranging them and gluing them at the bottom of the window.
Then the last step is to take the picture frame. I'm removing the back and I'm taking out the glass and then I am going to place the canvas inside the picture frame and my picture frame did come apart in the corner so I did have to glue that but uh, once that was done it was fine and so I just placed the canvas inside the frame added the back onto it so that I would still have the hanger and then uh, it was finished that's it so this piece could be set on a shelf or hung on the wall uh, you could also add your own hanger to it but I love how it turned out I am so happy with it For project number six, we're going to go a little bit Disney, but you could make this rope tray in just about any shape you'd like. For this project, I will be using a fairly sturdy piece of cardboard. I'm just going to recycle this box. I'll also be using some of the decorative nautical rope from Dollar Tree. I ended up using five packages of this for my tray. I'm also going to use just a piece of poster board to make my pattern. And for this, I am using one of the cake pans from Dollar Tree for the main part. And then I'm using this vase or glass from Dollar Tree uh, for the ears since I'm making mine a Mickey shape. Um, obviously, if you're just making a circle or a rectangle, you can use uh, whatever size that you want for that. I'm just tracing my pattern and then I'm going to cut it out. Then I'm going to trace this onto my cardboard and I will use a razor knife to carefully cut that out as well. Next I'm going to take my nautical rope and I'll remove the tape from one end and then I always put just a little bit of hot glue kind of in between the strands at the end and twist it together and hold it so that the ends of my rope don't fray. Then I'm going to start rolling my rope uh, really tightly at first and securing it with a little bit of hot glue. And once that glue is set, then I'm going to put some hot glue right in the center and just glue that down. And then I will continue wrapping the rope around and around, getting some glue on the cardboard as well as on the rope itself so that it holds very securely. Once I got to the end of the rope I cut off the tape that was around that end and added a little glue in the end again so that it wouldn't fray and then just glued it down and then started another rope. And I add a little bit of hot glue to the end of that rope to keep it from fraying and of course the idea here is to not be able to see where one stops and the other one starts. Now before I complete the last couple of rounds of rope on that main circle, I'm going to go ahead and do the ears on my Mickey head and I'm doing this because I want a nice transition where the ears meet. I want them to look a little bit more round and um, not have the main head part get in the way and so you'll kind of see as it gets put together what I mean um, but I'm just going to do the ears and then I'll finish up the head. So now that the ears are done I still have a little bit of space around the main part of the head and so I am going to uh, take some more rope and I am going to now fill that in so that uh, my whole shape, um, the cardboard piece, is covered with rope. Now I don't want that rough edge of the cardboard showing, so I'm going to take another piece of rope and I'm going to go all the way around my Mickey head and just glue that rope right over that edge of that rough cardboard. 
Next I'm going to start building up the sides of my tray. So I am going to add more rope on top of that um, last piece that I added around the edge. So now um, it's going on top and I'm building height on that layer. So and I'm going to go around the outside edge um, adding four uh, layers of rope so that my sides are about oh, two to two and a half inches tall approximately. I do want to mention this is not my original project. I've seen these on Pinterest and I just wanted to make my own and show you how I did mine. So here's the table in the family room where I wanted to make this tray for and this is what it looks like now. I am so pleased with this. I think it just adds that element of whimsy and fun but it still looks classy and nice and neat and so I'm really really happy with this. DIY number seven is a very simple but functional storage bucket for outside. I will be using this planter from Dollar Tree and this trivet I also found at Dollar Tree as well as some nautical rope and some ivory chalk paint. I'm going to start by dry brushing my planter with the chalk paint. Next I'm going to remove the little feet from the trivet and I am going to save these because I will be putting these back on. And I'm going to turn the planter upside down on the back of the trivet and trace around it so I know what the size is. And I'm going to use E6000 and glue those little feet back on so they are right up against the edge of the planter. I sealed the planter and then I cut a piece of rope, tied a knot in each end, and I'm gluing it onto the top of the trivet using some E6000 and hot glue. And now I have a really cute storage container with a lid that's perfect for keeping my garden gloves and my clippers in. This next project is a fun bee and sunflower welcome sign that's perfect for summer. For this project I will be using this wooden football from Hobby Lobby as well as these two wooden hearts from Dollar Tree. I'll also be using some yellow, black, and off-white patterned scrapbook paper, a 10 inch piece of thick black wire, and two wooden beads. I'll also be using some floral and greenery from Dollar Tree as well as about five different types of coordinating ribbon. I'll also be using this little chalkboard sign from Dollar Tree and I'm going to be using Mod Podge and some hot glue. I'm going to start by using the Mod Podge to adhere the black paper to the football and the off-white papers to the two hearts. While those were drying, I cut four one-inch strips of my yellow paper and then I dry brushed some Waverly Antique Wax around the edges and a little bit down the center of my strips. Next I'm going to use a sanding block to go around the edges of my wood shapes just to trim off the excess paper. Then I'm going to use that same antique wax to go around the sides of my wooden shapes and then I'm going to dry brush around the top edges as well. Next I'm going to lay my yellow strips of paper across the bottom half of my football shape and if you hadn't guessed I am making a B. So these are going to be the stripes across the bottom and I'm just spacing them out evenly and then I am decoupaging them on. And again I'll use the sanding block to remove the excess paper. Next I'm going to take my Mod Podge and I'm going to go over the top of the body of my bee as well as the two heart shaped wings. Then I'm going to attach the wings to the body with some hot glue and I'm also going to use my staple gun to uh, staple it from the back side for a little extra stability. Then using my widest ribbon I made a bow with two loops on each side and then I took my other four ribbons and I cut two pieces of each ribbon eight inches long and I'm going to make a messy bow using these ribbons. And I'm just using a zip tie to secure them in the middle. Next I'm going to trim the ends of each of the ribbons in a V shape just to give it more of a finished look. 
and I'm going to hot glue my big bow right in the center of where the wings meet. And I'm going to take a piece of each of the four other ribbons and glue it hanging down from the center of the big bow. Then I'm going to glue my messy bow right in the center on top of those. Next I'm going to take my sunflowers, my greenery, and a few little white flowers and arrange them all around the bow. And when I'm happy with the way they look, I'm going to secure them all with hot glue. To make the antenna, I folded my wire in half and then I glued the two wooden beads that I had painted black to the ends of the wire and just shaped them to make the antenna. And then I glued that to the back of the bee. Then I wrote welcome to our hive on the little chalkboard sign and added it below the flowers. Then I painted the back black and added a hanger. In this next DIY project, I transform a wire football wreath form into this birdcage decor piece. For this project, I am using this football wreath form that I picked up at Dollar Tree, and I am cutting it in half using some wire cutters. Then I'm going to take them out and give them a coat of black spray paint. I found this sign at Dollar Tree. It is the perfect size for this project. So I'm removing the hanger and all of the labels as well as the stake. And then I'm going to paint both sides using some black chalk paint. I also picked up this little bird from Dollar Tree. I clipped it to this old floral stem and I'm going to paint it black as well. Now I'm going to glue half of my football wreath frame to the circle and I'm going to use some E6000 and some hot glue around the edge for this. Then I'm going to use these little clamps from Dollar Tree to hold it securely and let it dry overnight. The next day I came back, removed the clamps, and now I'm going to add the other half of the football frame. Now this one does not have the rim around the bottom, so I am going to use some zip ties to attach it at the top, and then I'm going to add a little E6000 between the wires, and then I'm also going to add some zip ties and E6000 to the bottom corners as well. Then I'm going to come in and add some E6000 everywhere the bottom of those wires are touching that circle which is the bottom of the bird cage. And once again I let this dry overnight. Because the top zip tie will not be visible on the finished project I'm going to leave it and just trim off the extra end but on those two bottom zip ties I'm going to remove them completely. Then I'm going to use some jute twine and hot glue that around the bottom of the bird cage. I'm going to go around it about eight times. Now I'm going to use one of these candlesticks from Dollar Tree and I'm going to glue my bird cage to the top of that using E6000 and a little bit of hot glue. Then I'm going to glue a wooden bead that I painted black onto the top, right on the top of that zip tie. And then I will remove the clip from my little bird and glue it on top of the bead. Next I'm going to add a string of these lights with the greenery from Dollar Tree, as well as a few of these really pale pink roses and a little bit more greenery. I'm using just some boxwood from Walmart.
Number 10 is another bee-themed project, and I just love this one. For this project, I will be using one of these hexagon mirrors from Dollar Tree, as well as this yellow patterned scrapbook paper. I'm using this vinyl transfer that I cut out on my Cricut machine. And I'll also be using a couple of coordinating ribbons from Dollar Tree. I'm going to start by removing the mirror from the frame. Then I'm going to trace the mirror on my scrapbook paper and cut that out. Next I'm going to use some Mod Podge and I am going to Mod Podge that paper onto the back of the mirror. And once I lay my paper down, I'm going to smooth it out and I'm using my little Cricut burnishing tool to uh, smooth all of the bubbles and wrinkles out and then I'm going to let that dry completely before I put the coat of Mod Podge over the top of the paper and I, I just think that this helps reduce wrinkles uh, by letting it dry in between instead of putting the top coat on right away. So I decided which direction I wanted my hexagon to be with the patterned paper and then I am going to put my vinyl design on this. This is a design that I purchased off of Etsy. It was only $1.50 so I think that's a great deal. It's super cute. I'm going to put the link in the description box below in case you want to get that. If you don't have a Cricut you could print out something on a piece of paper or patterned paper and uh, use that but uh, there are all kinds of designs uh, that you could put on this. It doesn't have to be this particular one. Now I'm going to put this back into the frame and add the back on and you'll want to make sure, especially if you're going to hang it, that you get the little hanger in the right spot and then I am going to add some embellishments to this. So I am taking some of this burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree and I am just making a loop uh, just the size of a bow that I want to add to it and then I'm using some of this black and white ribbon and I'm going to add a little bit of a smaller loop to the top of that just to make a cute little bow. I'll secure both of these with a little bit of hot glue and then tie a little piece of twine around the center to finish that off. I was just going to put a button in the center of my bow, but I found this old costume jewelry ring in my stash and I think this is going to be perfect. I love using old jewelry and um, miscellaneous th items for embellishments. It just adds uh, something extra to your projects. So um, I'm just using the top of this ring. I'm going to glue my bow on the top of my frame and then put that uh, flower in the center of the bow. I decided I wanted to add something extra so I'm taking some of this greenery and this is just some, I think I got this at Walmart um, but it was really inexpensive and I'm just taking four sprigs of this and adding it behind my bow. Alright, we're up to number 11. This is a DIY perfect for your kitchen or dining room table. We're going to start by making a little project for the kitchen or dining room using this lighted wood sign from Dollar Tree. 
I'll also be using some little scraps of paint stir sticks that I had on hand. A scrap of black scrapbook paper or craft foam. And this set of salt and pepper shakers from Dollar Tree. First I am using a pair of needle nose pliers just to twist off those pieces that are holding the front and the back together. I'm only going to be using the front piece that says home sweet home for this project. Then I'm going to sand off any excess glue that's left over and I'm going to take some Waverly chalk paint in the color of ivory and paint the front of my little sign. Next I'm going to measure and cut my paint stir sticks. I'm putting two of the sticks together and measuring the thickness of this and then I am going to measure out the width of my front piece and subtract the width of those two stir sticks from it and then I'm going to cut a piece that size and I know that's a little confusing but um, you'll see how it all fits together here in a minute. Then I'm also going to cut another piece that is exactly the width of the front home sweet home sign. So once I have those all marked out, I'm going to use my miter box and saw just to cut those to the correct length. And I'm also going to mark out two pieces of the paint stick that are just the width of the paint stick. And these are going to be the sides of my little box. And then I will cut those as well. Then I'm going to go over all of my wood pieces with some sandpaper just to smooth out any rough or splintery edges. Now I'm going to assemble my little box using some wood glue and I will also use a little bit of hot glue to help hold it together. I'm going to glue the two shortest pieces to the ends of the medium piece and then I will glue that onto the longest piece so that it looks like this. And the home sweet home sign is going to make the fourth side of the box. Next I'm going to trace my sign on a piece of thin black craft foam and you may want to make sure this is not too thick. You could also use some cardstock for this. After I cut that out I'm going to trim where the little box is because I want to glue the box directly to the wood sign and not to the foam. I just think that it will hold together better this way. I'm going to use my hot glue gun and attach the foam to the back of the home sweet home sign. And then I'll use some wood glue to attach the little box to the sign as well. And then I just put a couple rubber bands around this and let it dry for a couple of hours. Now I'm going to paint the little box using the ivory chalk paint and I decided not to paint the inside of the box but if you were going to paint it I would recommend painting it before you glue it on to the home sweet home sign. I also wanted to paint the edges of the home sweet home sign black and I started with a paintbrush and paint but I decided that it would be faster and easier to just use a sharpie marker and this worked great. Then I'm using a little bit of black chalk paint and just a really bristly brush and I'm going to dry brush over the entire piece. This is just going to give it a little bit of a worn and aged look. And to finish it off, I just tied a simple bow in this black and white check ribbon from Dollar Tree and hot glued it to the top of the little home sweet home sign and added my salt and pepper shakers.
Number 12 is another one of my favorites. It is this flower market flower box. We're going to be using two of these arched window decor pieces from Dollar Tree. I'm going to remove the little sign and the glue. Then I'm going to cut a piece of foam core board 13 inches by 6 and 3 eighths inches and I'm going to glue that to the bottom of both of those window decor pieces. I just used my hot glue gun with some Gorilla Glue Sticks and it worked really well for this. Next I cut two more foam core board pieces, 13 inches by 3 and 7 eighths inches, and I'm going to glue these up on the sides in between the two window decor pieces, so I'm creating a box. And I secured them to the window decor pieces as well, just to make it nice and sturdy. Then I measured the inside width of my box and I am going to cut two more foam core board pieces, six inches, which is that interior width, by the three and seven eighths inches. And then I'm going to attach those inside with some more hot glue. I wanted to cover up those raw cut edges of the foam core board, so I'm taking some of those uh, barbecue skewer sticks, the long ones from Dollar Tree, and I cut them 13 inches to go across the top of those sides and then also along the bottom. Then I cut the handle from a toilet plunger from Dollar Tree down to 13 inches and sanded both ends and then I am staining it just using some antique wax from Waverly. And while that's drying I'm going to spray paint my flower box with this heirloom white spray paint by Rust-Oleum and when you do this you want to make sure that you do several really light coats so that that foam core board does not get too wet or else it will start to wrinkle up. Once that is dry, I'm going to come in with some of that antique wax and I'm going to dry brush the entire project. Then I will use some E6000 and a little bit of hot glue to attach my handle to both ends. And then I'm going to add this really cute fresh flower market sign that I found at Dollar Tree onto the front of my box. I picked up these three little metal pails in the party section at Dollar Tree and I'm spraying them with a coat of metallic silver spray paint. Then I'm going to take some elephant chalk paint and I'm going to use an old brush and just pounce that all over to make like a galvanized look. And then I'm going to use a lighter craft paint, just a lighter gray, and do the same thing and then I'll mix the two colors together and go over it a third time just to build those layers to give it a more realistic galvanized look. Now I'm going to add these three little buckets to my box and now it's ready for flowers. Number 13 is a faux galvanized wall pocket. It is a dupe of something I saw on a website. So I don't know about you, but for months I have been looking for these galvanized wall vases at Dollar Tree and have not been able to find them. I thought they would be really cute to put some succulents in, kind of like this one from Wayfair that they are selling for $45. So. I set out to make my own using items from Dollar Tree since I couldn't find the wall vase and here's what I came up with. For mine I will be using a cake pan from Dollar Tree and one of these chopping mats that come in a two-pack 
and a little bit of jute twine as well as some Spanish moss and some of the faux succulents all from Dollar Tree. Using my cake pan as a pattern I am going to cut out a half circle on one of the plastic cutting mats and this is one that I had already used for a project and had a scrap left over it's going to be perfect for this. So I'm just going to trace around the cake pan and then I am going to cut out that mat and it cuts real well just using scissors. And I actually decided I wanted mine to be a little bit smaller than half the size of the cake pan so I'm just adjusting that here so that the pocket on the front of my vase is actually going to be a little bit shorter. Next I'm going to take some metallic silver spray paint and spray that piece that I cut out so that it looks similar to the cake pan. Next I'm going to use several different shades of gray paint and an old paintbrush and I am going to paint this to look like galvanized metal. So the first color I'm using is Elephant by Waverly. It's a chalk paint and I am just dabbing this on. I'm twisting and turning my brush as I pounce it on and it really doesn't need to be neat. As you can see I'm just really quickly going over this and I didn't paint the cake pan down in the inside where the inside of the pocket would be um, but I did paint it everywhere else and then I'm also painting the front side of my cutting mat. Next I'm going to come in with a lighter color gray paint and I am going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to go over the top of that elephant colored chalk paint and I'm letting some of it show through and I'm just going to be building layers of different shades of gray to give it that galvanized metal look. After the darker and the lighter gray paint I am going to mix the two so that I have kind of a medium shade of gray and then I am going to go over the entire piece with that as well and as you can see I'm also doing the sides and the back of the cake pan. Next I'm going to use some E6000 along that bottom rim of the cake pan and I'm going to glue on that cutting mat to the front and uh, I'm just making sure that it's all lined up nice and evenly and then I'm using some of those little clamps from the crafter square aisle at Dollar Tree. These are super handy. If you find them at your store be sure to pick them up. So I clamp them all around and then I let it sit for a couple of hours. After the glue is all set I'm going to remove those clamps and then I'm going to spray the entire piece with a couple of coats of matte sealer. Then before I put anything in my planter I'm going to add a little piece of jute twine just as a hanger because it will be so much easier to add this hanger before we put something in the vase. I am actually going to use a little bit of E6000 to do this and then I'm going to hot glue a piece of popsicle stick over the top just to make sure it's nice and secure. Then as a little bit of filler I'm going to use a Dollar Tree plastic bag and tuck that down inside. Then I'll be adding some Spanish moss on top of that. Then I picked out three of the faux succulents from Dollar Tree that I thought went well together and just arranged those in the vase. Once I had the succulents in I felt like they were sitting up too high like my pocket was too big so I took it all out and I used a ruler and a razor knife just to trim off a little bit of that front pocket and make it lower. 
Now, I know it looks like I was getting really close to my fingers here, but trust me, I was being very careful. So just be very cautious if you are going to use a razor knife to trim this. And once I had that trimmed down, I added my Spanish moss back in, put my succulents back in, and I was so much happier with the way it turned out. All right, number 14 is going to take us into some fall DIYs, starting with this cute truck sign. For this project, I will be using one of these galvanized bottle cap signs from Dollar Tree and some of this water slide decal paper from Hippo. Let me show you how fun and easy this is to use. When you put this paper in your printer, you do want to make sure that you put it in so that it prints on the shiny side. And this paper is basically eight and a half by 11, so it should fit in any printer. Your printer does need to be an inkjet printer for this to work, but the design prints off beautifully on this as long as you're using a high quality uh, image. And I was really impressed with how uh, vivid the colors were and just how nice it really looked. So I have started creating some of my own downloadable printables and I have put those in an Etsy shop. This is one of them that is on there. There's several different versions of it that has the scripture or also one without. And I'm using a part of that design for this project today and that is on there as well. The water slide paper comes with great instructions and on the instructions it says to give your project three coats of matte sealer spray and this is to seal that ink because the ink in your printer is not waterproof necessarily so this will uh, help seal the ink keep it from running so I'm going to do three light coats of this matte sealer and uh, I'm going to wait until each coat is completely dry and it says to wait about 10 minutes you want to make sure that each coat is dry you can also use a blow dryer on a low setting uh, to help speed up this drying process once the matte sealer is completely dry then I'm going to cut out my design and the instructions say to leave at least an eighth of an inch around your design. I left a little bit more but I just cut this out. Next I'm going to place this in some just room temperature water and the paper does curl up that's totally fine. I'm going to leave it in there for about 30 to 60 seconds. I left mine in a little bit longer I think that works a little bit better and once it uh, starts absorbing the water then the design will kind of relax and not curl up as much but after about 60 seconds then I'm going to take my design out of the water I'm going to put a little bit of water on my project just to make it easier to transfer to and then I'm just going to use my finger and my thumb and just slide that design up a little bit and then grab the paper on the bottom edge and just slide it right out from under that uh, design and it slides out so easy it works really well I expected this to be wrinkly and I expected it to maybe um, tear but it did not it worked great and then I'm gently going to dab some of the excess water out from under and kind of push it out from under that design and just dab any excess water away and then I'm going to set that aside and let it completely dry for at least three hours 
once it is completely dry then I am going to add some embellishments I'm going to create a bow using this black and white check ribbon from Dollar Tree just looping it back and forth I have till I have five loops on each side and add a center loop and then I'm going to use a piece of floral wire just to tie around the center and um, twist it real tight to keep the bow all together then I'm going to fluff out the bow just by pulling on some of those loops and I will hot glue that to the top of my little bottle cap sign and I did want to add a little bit more color to this I wanted something with some orange in it to kind of bring out those pumpkins so I'm using some of this berry garland from Dollar Tree and I'm going to wrap it around a pencil and kind of make it a little curly cues and uh, just do it a couple of those and tuck them underneath the bow and glue them in just to add just a little bit more color. Number 15 is another fall sign in muted colors that's perfect for farmhouse decor. For this next project, I will be using one of these 11 by 14 artist canvas boards from Dollar Tree. I will also be using four of these paint stir sticks. These are the larger ones, the five gallon uh, paint stir sticks, and you can get them at Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's. And I found this peel and stick wallpaper at Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using one sheet of this. A couple other things I'll be using are these pumpkins, one of these little pumpkin signs from Dollar Tree, as well as one of the pumpkins off of this little hanging pumpkin football sign, also from Dollar Tree. You really don't need these exact ones, just a couple of pumpkin shapes that are two different sizes will work. So first I'm going to adhere my adhesive wallpaper to the canvas board and uh, it's a little bit longer, it's the perfect width but just a little bit longer so I'm just marking and cutting off the excess of that wallpaper sheet and then I am going to stick that to actually the back side of the canvas board. Uh, because I think it will stick better to that uh, instead of trying to stick it to the actual canvas which has a more of a texture to it. And once I got my edges lined up on this peel and stick wallpaper it was very easy to put down. I didn't end up with any bubbles or wrinkles or anything. Uh, I thought this worked really well. I'm going to need to cut down my paint stir sticks so I am marking them so that they are an inch longer on each side for the top and the bottom so the canvas is 14 so I'm marking these at 16 inches and I'll cut two at 16 inches and I thought I was going to assemble this a little bit differently than I actually ended up doing so the two side pieces you want to cut at 14 inches so you'll have two at 16 and two at 14 and I just used my miter box and saw to cut these off. This is a great tool. I highly recommend getting one to have in your crafting tools. It just makes projects like this really easy. Then I'm going to use a little piece of sandpaper and just smooth out those cut edges and get any splinters or rough places uh, all smoothed out. Next I'm going to paint the tops and the sides of my stir sticks with some black chalk paint. While those are drying, I'm going to take my little pumpkin sign and remove the little stand. It just pulls right off. I'm going to remove the label from the back because I am going to be painting the back and this is the side that we're going to see. So uh, I'm going to make sure I get all of the label and the adhesive off of that. And I am going to remove that little sunflower piece that is on the pumpkin and I was going to remove the bow as well but I decided to leave it on 
and I'm just going to hot glue it out of the way so it doesn't show from the other side and then I'm also going to hot glue that little sunflower back onto the pumpkin but I'm going to put it in the center of the pumpkin and these are just going to help hold the pumpkin up off of my project just to give it a little bit more dimension. The edges of this pumpkin were a little bit rough so I did go over it with some sandpaper also. Then I'm going to paint this pumpkin using some ivory or this is called chiffon cream chalk paint, just an off-white chalk paint and I did have to do two coats on this. Then I'm going to take one of the pumpkins off of that pumpkin and football hanging sign and I am going to paint the back side of it a sage green color. Again I went over it with some sandpaper and going over where the little staple holes are with the sandpaper really just fill them in and you don't even see them. I'm using a chalk paint. You could use just an acrylic craft paint as well. And I am just painting the back side and around the edges. So here's a little tip. If your paint seems dry, if you touch it, if you uh, put your hand on it and it still feels cold, then it is not completely dry. And so if you touch it and it feels just room temperature, then it's dry. But if it still feels cold, not dry yet. So while the first coat of paint is drying on that white pumpkin, I am going to go in and do a little bit of dry brushing with the off-white paint onto my black frame pieces. And I went a little heavy on this, and I actually went a little too heavy and had to go back and darken it up a little bit. Okay, now my pumpkin is dry, so I'm going to add that second coat of paint on this. Then I'm going to add some dry brushing with the white paint on my green pumpkin. I'm going to go around the edges and then I'm going to add some dry brush lines but I'm going to do them kind of down in a curved motion so that it kind of shows the shape of the pumpkin, kind of giving it a rounded look. This will just give it a little bit more of a three-dimensional look. Once that second coat of paint is dry on the white pumpkin, I am going to do the same type of dry brushing, but I'm using the green paint that I used on the other pumpkin uh, for the dry brushing on this. And I'm going to do those curved lines as well. So I didn't think my frame pieces had enough contrast uh, between them and that wood background, so I did decide to go ahead and darken them up a little bit. I'm still letting some of that dry brush that I did earlier show through so that they still have that aged look, but I just darkened them up a little bit. So instead of gluing my frame pieces onto just the wallpaper, I decided to use a razor knife and just trim a little bit of the wallpaper away so that I can glue those frame pieces to the canvas board itself. I felt like this would just make it a little bit stronger. I'm not sure this was really necessary, however, because the wallpaper was pretty stuck down to the canvas board. I'm going to glue the top and bottom pieces on first and here I'm just making sure that I have an inch overlap on each side so that my frame piece is centered and then I'm going to just adhere this with some hot glue. I always use Gorilla Glue sticks in my glue gun just because they hold better but um, I think regular hot glue would be fine for this too. Next I'm going to add my side pieces. I'm going to line the outside edge of the stick up with the uh, outside edge of the canvas and this is going to leave an overlap. Uh, I like the way this looked. It kind of looked like a crate maybe to me uh, and I'm just making sure that it's centered and then I'm going to attach it with hot glue. And then I'll repeat the same thing with the other side. So now I'm going to position my pumpkins where I will be attaching them, but I am not going to attach them yet. 
So I'm just positioning them and then I'm going to see where I want to place my wording. And here is where that water slide decal paper comes in. I've cut out this design that I printed out that says Happy Harvest and I'm just positioning that where I want it. I think it will be easier to put this on if the pumpkins are not attached so I'm going to just position it and then I'll remove those pumpkins so that I can attach it uh, a little bit easier. So again I'm going to take my decal and I'm placing it in the room temperature water for 60 seconds. After 60 seconds, I will take it out and I'm going to again put just a tiny bit of water on my project and then position my decal where I want it. Now that I have it where I want it, I'm going to take those pumpkins off of the project so it will be easier to put my decal on. And again, I am just going to be sliding that paper right out from under the design and um, this is positionable a little bit after you get it uh, slid out as long as you have enough moisture on it so you can uh, kind of move it around a little bit carefully uh, right at first but um, again it just went on so easy I think this is a great alternative if you don't have a cutting machine where you can do vinyl or something like that this is an amazing alternative to that. You can do so many different projects with this and I will put the link to it in the description box below. Uh, the Hippo water slide transfer paper is very affordable. You get 20 sheets in a package and you could do tons and tons of projects with it. And you can basically do any design that you can print on your printer and look how nice this looks. I am very very impressed. Before I attach my pumpkins, I'm going to add a little bit of detail to the edges I'm using a Sharpie marker and just doing some broken dotted lines, longer and shorter kind of squiggly lines around this uh, just to kind of outline the pumpkin and really make it stand out. And then I'm also going to put some uh, curved lines down the center of the pumpkin to give it that more dimensional look as well. And I did the same thing to the green pumpkin. Now I'm going to attach my pumpkins so I will glue the larger pumpkin right up against the frame on the right hand side. And Then I'm going to take a couple of these tumbling tower blocks and I'm going to use these as spacers to lift that green pumpkin up higher so that I can set it up over the top of the frame and I'm going to glue the little blocks down and then glue the pumpkin on top of that. And I love the uh, three-dimensional look that this has. I'm going to glue a little bit of Spanish moss to the bottom of the white pumpkin. I also tied a simple little bow from that black and white check ribbon and I'm hot gluing that to the top of the white pumpkin. I wanted to add a little something to the green pumpkin so I am taking this thin jute twine and I'm going to wrap it around the stem three or four times just tie a little knot and then trim off the ends. The last step is to add a hanger so I am going to use a little bit thicker jute twine and I am going to thread this underneath the side piece because it's sitting on those uh, top and bottom pieces so there is a gap so you can just thread it through there and then I'm going to make a little crisscross on the front of the frame on those corners tie them in the back and then leave enough for a hanger and then I will put it through on the other side make the crisscross and tie it off and uh, that's an easy way and a decorative way to make a really cute hanger And after I did this, I just had to put the little crisscross 
uh, jute twine on the bottom corners as well just to finish it off and I love 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 how this turned out and I love how that water slide decal looks on here just a fun project all the way around I loved making this Alright, we are up to number 16 and we're going to move into some Christmas projects. For my next project, I'm going to be using three packages of these wooden rulers from Dollar Tree. You could also use the paint stir sticks if you can't get the rulers. And I'm going to be using some of this thicker jute twine. This is from Walmart. I'm also going to be using some red vinyl and my Cricut machine, but you could use stickers from Dollar Tree or decals, or you could even use acrylic paint markers or even a black Sharpie. To start with, I'm going to peel off the little plastic measurement parts on the ruler. They just peel right off and they are kind of sticky so I like to just stick them on the packaging so that when I throw them in the garbage they don't like stick to everything. And once I have those all removed, I'm just going to go over the rulers with a little bit of sandpaper just to get rid of some of that sticky residue that is left behind. So originally I thought I needed six rulers, really you only need five, and I am going to cut the first one at nine and a half inches, the second one at eight inches, then six and a half, five, three and a half, and then I'm going to cut another piece on that same ruler that is three inches, and I will put those measurements in the description box below. I'm using my miter box and saw to cut these and you do want to make sure when you measure these that the end you are cutting off and not using is the one that has the hole in it because all of these rulers have a hole in one end. If you don't have a miter box and saw I would highly recommend getting one. They are great for these little craft projects where you don't want to use a power tool and I do have a link to all my favorite crafting tools in the description box below if you want to check that out. So as I said, originally I did cut six pieces for the tree part plus one for the trunk of the tree. I ended up only using five for the main part of the tree. So now I am just sanding the edges to make sure there are no splinters or rough parts. And then I'm going to give all the pieces a coat of this chalk paint uh, just in an off-white color. This one is called Chiffon Cream. It is by Rustoleum, and I picked it up at Walmart. Once those have dried, I'm going to take some antique wax by Waverly, and I'm going to use this chip brush from Dollar Tree and just dry brush over each of the pieces and give them more of a distressed or aged look. If you are new to crafting or you're not familiar with dry brushing, it just means you get a very little bit of paint on a dry brush and you lightly rub it over your project and it leaves little streaks or lines on the project and usually on the edges and where any raised parts are and it just gives it that um, kind of antique or aged look. If you've watched my videos for any amount of time, you know that I love my dry brushing. It really is one of those techniques that just is so easy to do and it takes your projects kind of to the next level and really gives them that farmhouse look. So it was when I cut out my words on my Cricut machine that I realized I had one too many rulers. So I've taken one of those out. So as you can see here, I have five rulers for the main part of my tree and then I have my little tree trunk. 
So I'm just going to get those positioned where I want them and apply them to the rulers. Once I have the lettering all on, I'm going to space these out kind of where I want them. Then I'm going to take my twine and I'm just going to kind of rough eyeball measure how long I need the twine. So I'm going to start at the bottom uh, corner and go all the way up to the top. And then I will uh, be adding some at the top for a hanger and then back down the other side. And I'm going to add about 10 more inches just to make sure that I have plenty of twine. And then I'll just cut that off. Then I'm going to fold my twine exactly in half and then I'm going to tie a knot to form a hanger at the top. To make this next part a little bit easier I am going to use some painters tape and tape down that loop at the top to my table so that it will stay put. Then I'm going to lay the pieces of my tree across the top of the twine. As you can see, I'm just kind of roughly positioning them where I think they'll go. And then I am going to tape down the ends of my twine to the table as well. This is just going to make gluing the wood pieces to the twine so much easier. I used some craft sticks as spacers in between each of the pieces of my tree. This just helped me make the spaces more uniform and help them not to be uneven. Then I am carefully adding a little bit of hot glue to the top of each piece of twine and gluing each piece of wood on. Next I'm going to take a small piece of twine and I'm going to glue one end to the trunk of my tree and this is on the back side of that ruler and then I'm going to just loop it around and glue the other end on the other side. And once the glue is set it's okay to trim off those extra ends at the bottom and then I'm just gluing that tree trunk right in the center below the word Christmas. Now I did want to add a little bit of embellishment to the top but I had this little galvanized star that's pretty underwhelming and then I had this larger gold glittery star but that seemed a little overwhelming so then I thought well maybe I could use this metal star off of this ornament from Dollar Tree but it was just too big and didn't look right so I decided to scrap the star idea and just go with some greenery and um, maybe some sort of uh, floral or pine cone something or other so I am using this little package of Christmas embellishments from Dollar Tree and they actually have been carrying the, these like this summer so um, check your craft sections for these and um, they were with like the florals and stuff so uh, I'm just picking out a few things that I think go together well and I'm going to add those to the top of the tree and I actually really like how this looks on the top of the tree better than any of those star options. So I made a Christmas tree with rulers, so now I'm going to make a star using paint sticks. 
I will be using five of these five gallon paint stir sticks. These are the longer ones and you can pick these up at Lowe's or Home Depot or even Walmart and they're very inexpensive. I also picked up two of these uh, holiday picks. These were at Walmart for 98 cents each. You can use any type of greenery that you'd like. And I'm going to be using about three feet of this black and white checked wired ribbon. The first thing I'm going to do is use my miter box and saw to cut off the ends of the stir sticks right where they start to curve in so that I just have straight sticks. After those are cut, I'm going to take some sandpaper and just smooth off those edges and anywhere else on those sticks where it might be a little bit rough. I'm going to use some antique wax by Waverly and I'm going to water that down and I'm basically making this like a stain. I just think this is so much easier to work with than stain. I think it's less messy and I feel like I have a little bit more control over it but if you want to use stain you can do that. And so I am just painting my sticks and then I'm going to use a paper towel, wipe off a little bit of the excess because I want the wood grain to show through. And I'm going to do this with all five sticks. Once these are completely dry, I am going to take them and give them all several coats of a clear sealer. I'm using a matte sealer. If you want something that is weather resistant uh, to help seal the wood. Then once the sealer is all dry, I am going to arrange these in the shape of a star. So I'm going to uh, determine which side I want uh, for the uh, front of my star and I'm going to use those uh, sticks, those sides facing up and then I am going to just lay them out until I get my star shape just the way I want it. And because this is going to go outside, I am going to use wood glue to fasten these together. And I'm going to use some clips from Dollar Tree. And I will be using some hot glue just to help hold it in place while the wood glue dries. But you don't want to use only hot glue because in really hot or cold situations, um, in the summer or winter, the hot glue will just not hold together. In the winter, it just becomes brittle and breaks apart. In the summer, it just gets soft and comes apart. So that's why you need to use an alternative glue like the wood glue. So as you can see, I'm just adding a little bit of wood glue and then also a little bit of hot glue. And then I'm going to use these little clamps from the Crafter Square uh, section at Dollar Tree and just clamp them down until they've had a chance to set up. Now that my star is all dry and secure, I'm going to add my greenery. I'm just going to use these, but you could use something that's a little more Christmassy, uh, like some pine boughs, pine cones, berries, uh, really just anything that you have on hand or um, is something for the style that you're going for. I'm wanting this to look a little bit more just wintry and not quite so Christmassy, so I decided to go with these. and. I didn't do anything to these except spread the, the uh, leaves out a little bit and then I am going to use some floral wire from Dollar Tree and just use this to uh, wrap around the stems and around the top of the star and twist it and tighten it uh, so that it is secure. And since I want to put this outside, I don't want to use hot glue to keep the wire from sliding up toward the point of the star. So I am using just some craft sticks and some wood glue and I'm going to glue those over the top. And again, I'm using a little bit of hot glue to help hold that in place while the wood glue dries.
So while I'm working here on the back of the star, it's a perfect time to add the hanger. So I'm going to take some jute twine and tie a loop and then I am going to glue it to the back using some wood glue and a little bit of hot glue. And now I'm going to add my ribbon to the top to finish this off. So I'm going to put the ribbon over the top of all of that that I just glued on the back. This will kind of help make it look nice and neat on the back as well. Then I'll flip it over and I'm going to just tie a simple bow, nothing fancy, and uh, just uh, make it look uh, neat. And then I'm going to secure it with a little bit of glue underneath and then I'm also going to run some wire through it and kind of wire it to the sticks as well. I love how rustic and farmhouse this is. I did use some greenery that has a little bit of glitter on it, but I feel like I can get away with that for the holidays. We are almost to the end. We have three more to go. And this one is a farmhouse winter sign that was really easy to make and fun to do as well. So if you have the time and some scraps of wood or even like foam board from Dollar Tree, you could make this sign. However, I picked this one up at Hobby Lobby and the regular price was $14.99, but I got it half price. So $7.50 plus tax and it is all ready to go. All I need to do is add my embellishments and I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to do with the Cricut. For this project, I am going to use a pre-made design that is already in Cricut Design Space. I'm going to search Farmhouse Winter and see what kinds of things come up. And I love this first one that comes up is perfect, but as you can see, there are lots of different designs to choose from. And so I'm going to go ahead and select that first one and add that to my project and I'm going to then size it to the size that I need it to be and I love how it has the measurements along the top and the side so I can see exactly uh, how big this is going to be when it cuts out. So for this project, I am using the removable Smart Vinyl. And like I said, the Smart Vinyl is what you can use without a mat. So I'm just going to load my Smart Vinyl directly into the machine with no mat. And I think this is amazing. And then I am going to cut out my design. So when I choose Make It in Cricut Design Space, it's going to ask me if I'm going to be using a mat or not. And so I'm going to choose Without Mat. Then it's going to ask me what kind of material I'm cutting and I'm going to select Smart Vinyl Removable. And since I have a new blade in my machine, I'm just going to go with the default pressure, but you can choose more or less pressure if you would like to. When it's done cutting, I'm just going to unload my material from my machine and then I'm going to trim off the part that has my design on it and then I will weed my design. So weeding just means to remove all of the vinyl that you do not want, that is not part of your design. And so I'm going to peel this carefully back and then I'll use my weeding tool to pull any of those little inside areas of the letters or uh, the design. Once I have my design all weeded, then I'm going to take some Cricut Transfer Tape and I'm going to cut a piece that is uh, just right about the size of my design and I will peel the backing off of this and then 
place it carefully over my design. I usually start at one side and then pull the backing back to um, stick it down across the design trying to make sure that I get as few uh, wrinkles or bubbles as possible. And then I'm going to use my Cricut Scraper tool just to smooth that all out, get out any wrinkles or bubbles, and just make sure that it's all stuck down to the transfer tape. And then I will peel my design off of the backing. And if there are parts of the design that don't want to come up, they just uh, run the scraper tool over that a little bit more, and then uh, it will pull up. Now I'm going to stick my vinyl onto my project, so I'm going to just position the transfer tape um, where I want it and then press it down and go over it uh, several times using the scraper tool. And once that is stuck down well, I'm going to slowly remove my transfer tape and it just pulled off so easily and left my design on my project and it looks amazing. Next I'm going to create a little wreath using this wired jute and also a little piece of black and white check ribbon and a couple of these holiday picks that I picked up at Walmart for just 98 cents each. So I picked up this wired jute at Dollar Tree and I am just going to form a circle in the uh, size of wreath that I want. Then I'm going to go around a couple of times and twist it together just to give it a little bit more thickness. If you're not able to find the wired jute, you could just use wire for this. It's just to form the shape of the wreath and to uh, give a base to attach the greenery to. And I did use a little bit of hot glue just to secure the ends of this together so that it wouldn't come apart. Next I'm going to take my greenery picks and I'm going to pull the branches apart and then I'm going to start forming them around the wreath and I will use some of this floral wire that I picked up at Dollar Tree uh, to wrap around it to hold it all together. Once my greenery is all on, I am just going to add in the berries that were on those picks and I'll attach these using a little bit of hot glue. Now I'm going to use my black and white checked ribbon to attach my wreath to my frame. So I'm going to figure out where the center of my frame is and then I am going to hot glue one end of my ribbon um, on the top in the center and then I'll loop it through my wreath and adjust the length so that my wreath is hanging right where I want it and then I will glue the other end down and trim off the excess ribbon. I love how easy this project was and I think it looks very high-end. I love that it is a farmhouse and it's for winter, not just Christmas, and I couldn't be happier with this project. Next up, number 19. For my next project, I will be making this lighted Christmas glass block, and I think these are so fun for the holidays. I'm actually going to be using a design that I purchased on Etsy and then uploaded into Cricut Design Space. And this design has three different colors, and so as I go to uh, cut this, the Cricut Design Space is just going to walk me through the steps uh, for changing my color of vinyl and cutting each of them out and I love how simple this is and how it just walks you through each step. 
So I'm going to trim down my designs and I am going to save the extra scraps because I can use those to cut out small things using a mat as well. So now I'm going to weed my designs and something I noticed with this particular design is I made this fairly small and it did a great job of cutting out the little tiny places. Uh, I was very impressed with that. And once all of my designs are weeded, then I'm going to add transfer tape to them. For my glass block, I'm using this five and a half inch square block that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. The regular price is $9.99. Again, I got it 50% off, so I paid just $5 for this. And they do have them in a larger size. I believe they're eight by eight. Um, and then they have some different shapes, rectangular shapes and, and things as well. So I'm just going to remove the sticker and then I am going to uh, make sure it's all nice and clean and uh, wipe it with some rubbing alcohol just to make sure there's no grease or anything on there. And these blocks from uh, the craft stores have these uh, little plugs in the bottom where you can put the lights in. If you pick up a glass block from uh, a home improvement store, they're not probably going to have that. Now I'm going to start adding my vinyl design and I'm going to put the larger black design on first. This is my main saying and so this will be easiest to position. So I'm going to pull it off of the transfer tape making sure that I get all of the design and then I'm going to position it on the front of my block and go over it with my scraper tool and then peel off that transfer tape. And now I'm going to add in my other colors to complete this design. Now this is cute even just this way, but I am going to actually frost my glass with this frosted glass paint from Rust-Oleum. I picked that up at Walmart. I believe it was about $5 and I am going to spray right over the top of my vinyl. It won't change the color of the vinyl, um, but I just found it easiest to do this way and I'm going to give this block about three light coats of this, letting it dry uh, thoroughly in between each coat. And I forgot to show it on camera, but you do want to spray this with a sealer after the frosted glass paint is dry otherwise that frosted glass paint wants to uh, scratch off sometimes so just to make it so it stays on I would recommend giving it a coat or two of clear sealer. Next I'm going to take some buffalo check ribbon this is wired ribbon and it's wide and so I didn't want it quite this wide so I'm just going to fold it in half secure it with a little hot glue and then I am going to uh, put some hot glue on the bottom and attach it all the way around the side of the glass block um, everywhere except where that hole is in the bottom where I'm going to put my lights. And I'm going to use the same ribbon and make a bow to put on the top of my block. To secure the bow, I'm going to use a small zip tie from Dollar Tree and just put that through the center and cinch it up tight. And then I'm going to use some hot glue and attach that to the top of the block. 
The last step is to add some lights. I am just using a string of 20 lights from Dollar Tree. I picked this up last year and just had it in my stash. And so I'm just going to uh, put those up inside the glass block and they kind of just hold themselves in place pretty well. And then I'll thread the uh, cord through the little hole in the plug that goes uh, in the bottom. And I like these because you don't have to use batteries and you can just plug it in. I think these would make great Christmas gifts. They are quick to make and pretty budget friendly too. Just two more to go, and this one is definitely another one of my favorites. I will be using this house shelf to make a really cute winter decor piece. So I'm going to also be using these two uh, tree ornaments that I picked up at Dollar Tree, and these come in a two-pack for a dollar. I'm going to start off by using some midnight blue acrylic craft paint and I am going to paint the front of my house shelf with this paint. And actually I paint the sides and the back too just to give it a nice finished look. But I don't paint the, the shelf part. I'm going to leave that white. So as you can see it's going to take a couple coats of paint to cover up the design on this. So I'm using my heat gun to uh, dry this coat of paint because I'm very impatient and uh, you just want to be careful not to get the heat gun too close to this because it will cause it to bubble up if you do. Um, and then I'm going to add a second coat of paint once that's completely dry. The top of the shelf has a really nice white finish on it. I'm just going to leave that alone and I'm going to take some white paint and just go around the edges of it. And the only white white paint that I had was this uh, paint from Dollar Tree. It works okay but it's not my favorite. It does take uh, several coats to cover where I think a chalk paint or something would probably have only needed to do one or maybe two coats. I think I had to do four coats with this. Next I'm going to take an old stiff toothbrush and I'm going to dip it in the white paint and then I'm going to just use my thumb to flick the bristles so that it splatters white paint onto the blue and this is going to make it look like snow. I love this technique. It's super fun. If you haven't tried it before, you might want to practice before you do it on your project. But once you get the hang of it, it's really easy to do. Next, I'm going to take my tree ornaments. And on one of them, I'm going to actually cut it down a little bit. I'm going to be using my miter shears. I love this tool. These are great. My favorite crafting tools are all linked down below this video. You can use this to cut things at an angle or straight uh, and it will cut like through dowels and things like that. It works great for cutting this. I just want to cut this down to make it shorter uh, because I want my two trees to be two different heights. On the other tree, I'm only going to cut off just a teeny tiny amount at the very bottom just because it is at an angle and I want it to be straight across so that it is flat for gluing to my project. I'm also going to add one of these Let It Snow Wood Words from Dollar Tree to my project. And so I'm going to be painting that white. And instead of using that paint from Dollar Tree, I decided to use an acrylic paint marker uh, that I had from Arteza. 
So I let that dry and then I decided to add some of this sparkle glaze just to the little snowflake on here just to make it stand out a little bit more and so uh, this sparkle glaze you can get at uh, any craft store and I've probably had this bottle for like 10 years and it's still half full it's not dried out it works great so it's worth the investment I've used it a lot uh, because uh, just a little goes a long way but it adds just a little bit more um, of an accent and I uh, just kind of elevates the project a little bit the tree ornaments have a little hole in the top so that you can hang them. However, I don't want to have a hole in the top for this project. So I'm going to just put a little bit of hot glue inside that hole. And I'm putting on a metal ruler because when the hot glue goes through, then uh, once it sets up, it just pops right off of that ruler. Uh, whereas if you did it on your table, it would pretty much just be stuck to your table and so you could use wood filler for this but I wanted something that would dry quickly so I'm using hot glue once the hot glue is set up I'm going to paint that with some white paint so it blends in with the tree and then because these trees already have kind of a glitter on them, I'm going to add a little bit of the sparkle glaze over the top where I painted those holes. And that will just make it blend in and you won't even notice it. Now I'm going to attach my trees to my project. And because the only point of contact is that very bottom of the trunk of the tree, I'm going to use some E6000 on that very bottom and then I am going to kind of go around the base of the tree using my hot glue and this is going to um, help hold it on while that E6000 sets up. It will make kind of a little mound around the tree but we're going to paint that and um, it will just kind of disappear. So once the hot glue is completely set up on this taller tree that I put towards the back, I'm going to go ahead and paint that using my white paint. And again, I put a couple of coats on this to cover it up. I just thought it would be easier to paint this before I put the second tree on. Then I'm going to go ahead and add the second tree, the shorter one. I'm going to um, put it on the same way and I'm going to put it a little bit further forward and more toward the center. And I have to say I'm really loving how these white trees just pop against that blue background. So now I'm going to add some sparkle glaze to the white shelf part so that this all looks like fallen snow. I want it to kind of match the trees with that sparkle on it. And so I'm going to just add a, a couple coats of the sparkle glaze and I'm also making sure that I get it on the hot glue that is around the tree trunks as well. And to finish it off, I'm going to use some hot glue and glue on the Let It Snow. This is really pretty just like this, but look how amazing it looks with this LED candle that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I just love this so much. And here we are at number 21, this cute little snowman chalkboard. 
For this project, I will be using this cute little chalkboard snowman sign I picked up at Target for $5. And I like the chalkboard side. And the other side has this nice wood grain, but we're going to embellish it a little bit. And I'm going to be using these stencils that I picked up at Dollar Tree for this. I will also be using some of this decorative filler, also from Dollar Tree, as well as this white berry garland. I'm just going to use some white craft paint and the stencil to stencil on some snowflakes onto the wood side of my snowman. There are three different size snowflakes on this stencil and I am going to use all three of them and I'm not going to fill them in completely because I want this to be kind of a, a rustic stencil so it's not a real crisp line on my stencils. I don't want to stencil where his hat is because uh, he wouldn't be made of snow on his hat. So I am using a very light dry brush of black chalk paint just to go along the edge of a ruler where the edge of his hat would be where it meets the top of his head. And then I'm also going to dry brush a little bit uh, around the edges of his hat just to uh, make it stand out and give it a little bit of dimension. And then I added a few more snowflakes so it looked like it was coming from under his hat. Next I'm going to use that decorative filler to add some embellishments to his hat, sort of like it would be on the band of his hat, but I'm not going to add an actual hat band. I'm just going to add a few of these little snowy pine cones, and then there are some little um, white, they look like flowers, I'm not really sure what they are, but I'm going to add those as well. Next I'm going to take some of the white craft paint and I'm going to add some little snow patches to the top of his hat and a little bit on the brim as well. Next I'm going to take a couple of small pieces of the berry garland and I'm going to twist them around and then just add them to those little pine cone embellishments that I have on the top of his hat. Next my little snowman needs a scarf but I didn't want to do something just traditional or expected like ribbon or fabric so I'm going to use this berry garland and I'm going to make a little scarf. I didn't want to wrap it around the snowman because the chalkboard is on the other side and I want to be able to use that. So I just folded it over about four times and then I'm going to wrap it around a couple of times uh, to make the parts of the scarf that are hanging down and I just like how this is a little unexpected and rustic and I think it just really finishes off the snowman. And that's all I'm going to add to this snowman. I really like how this looks and I've got the chalkboard on the other side if I want to use that. So I'm really pleased with how this came out.
So there they are, my best 21 DIYs of 2021. I hope you enjoyed these and let me know in the comments if you have made any of these or if you're going to make any of these or which ones are your favorite. And be sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of you watching throughout the year. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe and join me for what's in store for 2022. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day.